Hi there folks, welcome back, I am i for scotland and today I thought we would be outlining what the continuity bill is. This was recently published by the Scottish Government and it plans to ensure that devolution is protected with the Scottish Parliament. So I thought we'd outline some of the issues there, mainly why it is needed, why we need to introduce this bill and why there has been some controversy over the presiding officer and the Lord Advocate disagreeing on the legality of the document. So we're probably all well aware about the devolution situation in Scotland and how the Scottish Government controls the likes of the Scottish NHS and our education system. But there are other areas of devolution, such as fishing and agriculture, that are technically devolved because they fit into an EU-wide framework for that specific policy area, which means that all of that policy area is exercised from the EU straight to Scotland. It doesn't go via Westminster. However... The reason for the continuity bill being drafted is because the UK government at Westminster is demanding the final say in a lot of these frameworks, so basically they don't want it to be a mutual agreement. And of course this gives them the option to utilise Brexit to take control of devolved powers. In a nutshell, they can power grab from the Scottish Parliament. If you think I'm talking complete mince, I'll introduce you to Mike Russell, the Scottish Government's Minister for Scotland's Place in Europe, who will put this far more eloquently than I just did. Presiding officer, no matter how much we oppose Brexit, a withdrawal bill is, and we have always made this clear, a proper and necessary step. Our laws must be prepared for the day the UK leaves the EU. If we did nothing, laws about matters such as agricultural support or the rules that ensure our high food standards would fall away entirely, and many others would stop working the way they were intended. However, the bill as drafted, and which has now been passed by the House of Commons, despite amendments proposed by the Scottish and Welsh governments and by the opposition parties, allows Westminster to take control of devolved policy areas in order, according to the UK government, to allow UK-wide arrangements or frameworks to be put into place after Brexit. It's important to stress this fundamental point before addressing the detail. This whole debate is about the existing powers of this parliament, powers in relation to policy areas such as farming, fishing, justice and the environment, for which this Parliament already has responsibility. The discussion about the way forward is therefore not an abstract or arcane one. It is first and foremost about protecting the devolution settlement that the people of Scotland voted for so decisively in 1997. But it's also about the best way to run important national and local services like our health service, the best way to provide agricultural support, such as less favoured area payments, which are essential in Scotland, but not used in England. The best way to devise procurement rules that are tailored to Scottish need and Scottish business. And the best way to protect and enhance our particular environment, consisting as it does of large areas of coast and sea. At present in these islands, we have a unitary, but not a uniform market. With the freedom to innovate, we have brought forward world-beating climate change legislation are in the process of implementing minimum unit pricing for alcohol and have been able to tailor business support to specific business need. Of course, we've always been clear that we accept in principle the need for there to be UK-wide frameworks on some matters. We've been working constructively with the UK and Wales to investigate those issues and explore how such frameworks would work. The key priority for us, however, is to ensure that these are always in Scotland's interests, as this chamber would expect. Accordingly, what is covered by any UK frameworks, how they're governed, and any consequent changes to the devolution settlement must only be made with the agreement of this Scottish Parliament. It's simply not acceptable for Westminster to unilaterally rewrite the devolution settlement and impose UK-wide frameworks in devolved areas without our consent. Cheers for that, Mike. So up next is a bit about the controversy regarding the legality of the bill. The Scottish Parliament's presiding officer and former Labour MSP, Ken McIntosh, rejected the bill, saying it was not within the legislative competence of the Scottish Parliament. Now this is particularly strange when Ken McIntosh's counterpart in Wales approved a near-identical continuity bill with the Welsh Parliament. We're almost sure it's got absolutely nothing to do with Ken McIntosh being a supporter of die-hard unionist group Scotland in Union, as it would be an absolutely crazy thing for a Scottish Parliament presiding officer to undermine the devolution settlement, wouldn't it? I'm sure it's all a misunderstanding. 
Of course, for something to be controversial, you do need two sides. So we've got presiding officer Ken McIntosh, who before he embarked on his political career was a BBC reporter. And on the other side, we have one of Scotland's top lawyers, Lord Advocate James Wolfe, who studied law at Edinburgh University and then civil law at Oxford before becoming an advocate. Then he became a member of the Queen's Council before being appointed Lord Advocate by Nicola Sturgeon in 2016. Now, James Wolfe has said that legislation's actually been carefully worded to ensure it lies within the Scottish Government's remit and there's nothing illegal about it. And as the only side with a vast amount of legal experience, we are kind of inclined to agree with him. Last but not least, we have Tory MSP Professor Adam Tompkins, who despite being somewhat of an academic and well aware that this isn't actually the case, he's deliberately misused the word illegal in this tweet. And our best guess is that this is just a Tory tactic as it'll allow the newspapers to churn out a ScotGov attacked over illegal legislation headline. So do not be surprised if you see that soon. Thank you very much for watching this video folks, hope this gave you an alright overview of the continuity bill. Uh, feedback is very much appreciated in the comments section below and if you enjoyed the video please consider liking and subscribing to the channel. Cheers and have a great day wherever you are.